Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. For today, I'm gonna be showing you how to make this super adorable little Christmas card. I absolutely love this one, and I think it's so much fun for um, just a friend that's more like laid back and not like super into the traditional Christmas stuff. I love all of the little Santa garments. It's honestly, I absolutely love this card. So um, one thing that's special about this card is we are going to be using our new Stampin' Blends and it's actually kind of a funny story. I filmed a video for last week using the Stampin' Blends for the first time in a video. I've played with them, I've played around with them quite a bit. But I filmed this video, it was gonna be the first time I was showing them to you guys and then I just, never found time to edit and upload it. So I don't, probably never gonna see that video. <laughs> it was a super cute card, but um, I have a feeling that you probably will never see that one. So I'm really excited to be showing you guys how to use um, our Stampin' Blends today. I'm really, really excited. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Um, we are going to be using this stamp set, which is called Santa's Suit, and it is from the um, holiday catalog. Absolutely adorable. It's a photopolymer set. You can do tons of really fun things with it. It's got this nice clothesline and little clothes pins, so you can actually pin the clothes on Santa. Um, I'm going to be doing it as a background. There's actually a card in the holiday catalog that has this, um, the clothes as a background, which is kind of where I got my inspiration from. I'm mixing it up a little bit, so it's not a, the exact same, but that is where I got my inspiration from. Um, so we're gonna be using a bunch of these little items here. For ink, we're gonna be using basic black as well as cherry cobbler. Like I said earlier, we're gonna be using our Stampin' Blends. So we're going to be using um, the old olive set as well as the uh, cherry cobbler set. And then I'm using the dark, um, Daffodil Delight marker. So uh, really quick about the Stampin' Blends. The, um, the idea behind them is, so they're alcohol markers, and the really cool thing about alcohol markers is that they blend beautifully together. So they're really, really awesome markers. You can do a ton of different techniques with them. What I'm gonna do today is pretty basic, but you can do quite a few different things with them, and they're just absolutely phenomenal to play with. Um, the thing about them is because they blend so well, you really need two colors that are very, very, very close to make them work effectively. So we have um, 10 colors right now. Is it 10 colors? Oh man, I always forget. Let me grab my brochure. Um, do, 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 flip to the right page, Lindsay. I'm lying to you, we have 11, 11, 12 colors and each of these colors has two markers. You have a light marker and a dark marker and the idea behind that is you can use the two markers together to blend really, really well. You'll see what I'm talking about when we actually get into it um, and you'll understand a little bit more why we're doing that. But you can also use them by themselves like we're gonna do with the Daffodil Delight marker today. Um, so these are available to purchase. They are absolutely phenomenal. We have a whole pack where you can get all of the markers. We have a couple um, specialty markers is what I've kind of been calling them because they don't have a partner and they um, have, they just can stand on their own. But um, they're absolutely phenomenal. You'll see how amazing they are when we start uh, playing with them today. So like I said, we're gonna use the Cherry Cobbler set, the um, Old Olive set, and then the Daffodil Delight Dark Marker. So move those off to the side. And then for our paper, so the first thing that we're going to be using is a piece of thick Whisper White. So when you use your alcohol markers, you really wanna use thick paper. Um, I would stay away from watercolor paper because it has um, a lot of texture to it. So the ink is going to tend to bleed as you start coloring. So I would stick to our thick Whisper White or a thick Very Vanilla, either or. And this piece is cut at four inches by five and a quarter. I have a piece of regular Whisper White here, which is cut at one inch by four inches. A piece of Cherry Cobbler, and this is cut at four inches by half, one and a half inches. A piece of Old Olive, and this one is two by four. And then our standard size card base I'm doing in Cherry Cobbler, and this is cut at eight and a half by five and a half. You'll see on our my sample card, I actually used Old Olive for my card base. Um, I'm just mixing it up, but if you wanted to do Old Olive, it would be the same eight and a half by five and a half card base, just in a different color. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is take our basic black and our card base here, and we're just going to stamp all of our little images. Um, I am using basic black. Uh, the recommended ink to use is um, our, the uh, Memento Tuxedo Black ink, but 
I cannot for the life of me find mine and I just need to order a new one but I just haven't yet um so I would go ahead and use that do as I say not as I do kind of one of those things I will tell you guys that um and I'll show you actually when I'm finished here that if you heat set the uh, basic black, I actually don't have many issues with it bleeding. Um, I did at first, when I very, very, very first used the basic black, I had issues with the ink bleeding um, as you use your alcohol markers, but I found that if you heat set it just with your heat tool, it actually sets pretty well. Um, so you may get, be able to get away with using basic black. Honestly, that's kind of why I haven't done it. I haven't purchased a new one yet because I've been getting away with just using, um, what I had. I need to, cause I need to place an order for a couple of new things or replacement things anyways, but I just haven't gotten around to it. I've been kind of slacking. So all I'm going to do is take all of my little images here from Santa's suit and I'm just going to stamp them around. Um, as usual, try not to wiggle or wobble your stamps. I'm not doing a fantastic job at that, but try really hard. I promise it will make a difference. Um, and just mix them up. I'm doing, actually, I'm gonna do a little boot over here just to give a little something, something, a little depth. Um, and just have fun. I love doing these kinds of cards, making my own backgrounds, as you, I'm sure if you've watched my videos before, you know that. Um, I love, love, love making my own backgrounds and just having fun. It's one of my favorite things to do with stamping is to stamp a bunch of images and color them in or just kind of leave them. It, honestly, it's one of my absolute favorite things. So I really like this one. So I'm just gonna continue to stamp all of my little images here and then I will be right back. Okay, so now that I've stamped my image, I'm actually going to move my paper out of the way. Now that I've stamped my image, like I was saying a little bit ago, I'm trying to, I forgot to put my heat tool away. Um, you can actually heat set the basic black ink and it'll hold up pretty well to the alcohol marker. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug my heat tool in and then just heat set my piece for just a few seconds to make sure that the ink is really, really nice and dry. Okay, so now that my piece is all nice and heat set, I'm gonna go ahead and start coloring. So I'm going to show you guys how I color Santa's little um, pants here. Um, and the reason I'm gonna do that image is because I pretty much do the same thing for all of the other images as far as how I'm shading goes. So I'm going to start off with my light cherry cobbler, cobbler, <laughs> cherry cobbler marker. And I'm just going to color in the whole image with the light marker. So I'm actually gonna do the suspenders in the green and just the pants in the cherry cobbler. So, and I'm actually gonna go ahead and do the buttons red this time too. On the sample that I did, I did them in uh, green and I kind of had to go around the buttons. So I just decided I'm gonna do them in red this time to make it a little bit easier on myself. And these markers have this really nice brush tip that makes it super easy to color and play with. Um, and the techniques that I'm gonna show you guys today are just very, very basic. Stampin' Up! actually did some really awesome videos on how to blend with them. So um, I will make sure to link to uh, at least one or two of those videos below so you can go and get some really good tips from them. That's kind of where I started. And then really with these, you just kind of have to play with them and see what happens. That's my best advice to anybody that's looking to get these and to mess around with them is just get them and start playing with them and you'll see what works for you and what doesn't. Um, so now I'm going to take my dark marker and just on the areas where there would be a little bit of shadowing. So right under where all of the attachments to the trousers are, as well as I'm going to do some shading down here on the pants, on the crotch area, just like so. And then right after that, I'm going to come back in with my light marker again and just color over the entire thing one more time to blend those colors together. So again, this is super, super, super basic um, shading. Super, super basic, nothing super fancy. 
just really, really basic, but you get a really nice color. One thing, um, so you may see right here that I, I don't know if you guys can see close enough. Let me see if I can, I don't know if this is in focus or not, but I color just a little outside the line. So we actually have a colorless blender. And what you can do is you can actually lift some of that ink up and um, I actually did a blog post about a month ago where I um, I showed you guys how to do that. And um, did I do a video for that card? I can't remember. I feel like I did. Maybe I didn't do a video for that card. I can't remember. I don't think I did. Um, but I'll link that blog post down below as well. And you can see how I just took the colorless blender and um, just hit that little spot right there and it makes the ink go away. Now I'm not super concerned about this. Um, that's such a tiny spot in a tiny area that I'm not going to fret over it. But if you wanted to, you could absolutely do that. That's one really cool thing is these markers are very forgiving. So the next thing I'm going to do is color in the little suspender. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to use my light old olive marker here and just color in, put a base coat down is kind of what I like to call it. just like this. It's super, super easy. I promise you guys. And they look absolutely amazing once you do it. So you could also just leave it. If you just liked that color and you didn't want to add a little bit of shadow to it, you don't have to, you can leave it. They're really pretty markers as they are, but I'm just going to go in and color again on the low points and then come back in with my light marker and just kind of blend that up and around. just like that. Super stinking easy. So I'm pretty much going to do the same thing for all of the other images. Um, for my jacket, I like to put my dark areas here. Let me see if I can have here. I'll use this. So I like to do my dark areas around the collar on the sides of this like white furry part is what I imagine it would be. And then right above the sleeves. And then on this section here, I do just a little bit of darkness right under the belt because that's kind of where it would be dark. And then on the hat, I just do a little bit of darkness right here on the right hand side of the hat. Super easy. Even for the mittens, I'm actually probably just going to put a little bit of darkness right on the bottom of them. Nothing super fancy, um, but that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. So I'm going to continue coloring and let you guys listen to some music for a second and I will be right back.
I am done with all of that. And then the last thing that I'm gonna do is take my Daffodil Delight marker and just fill in the little belt on all of the um, Santa suits. So I'm using the bullet tip for this just because I'm not doing any shading. I'm not doing anything fancy. I'm literally just filling this in with some color just to finish it off. And I think I got everything. Awesome. So you can see, um, I'm sure you can kind of, you could tell as I was coloring it, the different depth and shading that you can get with these markers. It's absolutely phenomenal. So I highly, highly, highly recommend getting you, um, getting yourself some of these. If you want, start with a couple colors. I really like the cherry cobbler. I also, I don't have my whole box of them. I also really like, um, Bermuda Bay, that's probably my favorite. Bermuda Bay and Rich Razzleberry are probably my top two combinations. They just blend beautifully and they're such pretty colors. So if you need um, some recommendations on colors, absolutely, those two would be my top picks. So now I'm gonna set that off to the side and let's just go ahead and finish up this card. So the next thing we're going to do is grab our stamp set again. And we're going to use the sentiment that says, have a jolly Christmas. Well, let me grab a block to put that bad boy on. Whoa, that was really crooked. And then I'm gonna grab my basic black. Okay, I think my dogs have finally settled down. So all I did was take my little strip of Whisper White and I stamped the Have a Jolly Christmas right on there with my basic black. And I just felt like it needs something to kind of make it pop off the card. So I'm just gonna take my Cherry Cobbler and there is this little tiny stamp that has three little dots. There's maybe like three little berries. And I'm just going to stamp this a couple of times around. Oops, try not to rock it like I just did. Hopefully nobody notices. Um, I'm just gonna stamp it around a couple of times just to give the piece a little bit more interest. Nothing too crazy, nothing too fancy, just a little something to kind of make it not just, not such a big blank white piece of paper. Just a couple more. Try not to rock it really like me. <laughs> Uh, I swear, do as I say, not as I do. That's the theme of this video. Okay, so now I'm just going to take this. I'm gonna flip it over, grab my little strips of cherry cobbler as well as old olive. I need to get my adhesive. I'll let me do that. And I'm just going to put a couple strips of adhesive on the back of this piece. And I'm gonna mount this up on our cherry cobbler just like so and then flip this guy over and put some adhesive on the back of this and mount it on our piece of old olive making it as straight as possible and then I'm gonna flip this one over and put some adhesive on the back of it and put it on top of our stamped image. I just think it looks so adorable. I love it. And I'm all about really making the background piece shine. I'm all about that, so I love it. Now all we need to do is take this, fold our card base in half, and listen to my dogs <laughs> bark at, I don't even know what outside. Um, and then I'm gonna flip this piece over, put some adhesive on the back of this, put this on our card base and that is going to be it for today. Let's just center this bad boy up. Super stinking adorable. So just to give you guys a side by side so you can see the difference between using cherry cobbler and old olive as the background, um, you can tell a little bit of a difference. I think I like the cherry cobbler just as a little bit more, um, but it's all personal preference. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. As always, if you um, have any questions, please feel free to contact me at littlemooncreation at gmail.com. You can shop all of these products 24 seven by simply going to my online store at littlemooncreation.stampinup.com net and um, make sure you check out the coordinating blog post which is always the first link in the description box below to get all of the information on um, all of these products. If you are interested in um, my free online card class this month I is featuring the um, oh shoot why can't I remember 
Oh man, I can't remember. I'll put the link, it's the mittens, but I can't think of, oh, and I can't see it all the way over there. Shoot, what is that stamp set called? Smitten Mittens, that's what it is. It's featuring the Smitten Mittens stamp set. Um, you can get into that free online card class just by simply placing a $35 or more order using the um, hostess code right here. And that'll get you into, that'll get you into the free card class. So I hope you guys are having a spectacular day and I will see you in the next video. Bye.